Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Mohawk Valley. I would like to first take the opportunity to thank Griffiths Institute for hosting us today. I'm Grace Wong, the Senior Vice Chancellor for Research and Economic Development at the SUNY System. I'm also the Interim President for SUNY Polytechnic Institute. Uh, we are grateful for the opportunity today to join all of you and welcome a dedicated public servant and also a champion for the SUNY and also the Mohawk Valley, the United States Senator, the Honorable Chuck Schumer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Thank you. I invested here. Yeah. Neatness, neatness has never been my strong suit here. There we go. Okay, good. So great, it's great to be here. I want to thank Dr. Wong for that nice introduction. Uh, our great director of the Air Force Research Lab um, is Colonel Lawrence, who is right here. Um, we have MC uh, Kershicki, who's the executive director of the uh, CNY uh, Defense Alliance, Mike Walsh from NYSTEC, and we have two great elected officials, uh, Congressman recently elected Congressman Anthony Brindisi. I knew him before he was assembly. <laughs> and our great mayor, uh, Jackie Izzo, of the city of the great city of Rome. So thank you all for being here. First, um, let me just say, quantum computing and quantum information science is the new frontier in science. It is vital. It has computers working at such a fast speed that they can do amazing things. And one of the many reasons we're so interested in quantum computing, it would do so many new things in so many different ways. But our military can tell you, if China, Russia, a country that's not friendly to us, gets way ahead of us in quantum computing, we will have no encryption. Quantum computing is so fast and so versatile that uh, they can break any code, because code breaking is a lot of quick mathematics and all of that and things that I don't understand and you folks understand better than me. So being in the lead in quantum computing and quantum information science is one of the national imperatives that we have as a national government. Uh, the security implications I mentioned are huge, as are the commercial implications and all the good things that can come out of quantum computing. Now it's years away, but if we don't get started on this now, we could fall behind and never, never catch up. Um, so that's the reason this is so important. It will transform industry, transform jobs, and protect America. It's that vital. What could be more vital than those three things? Okay, so we got to stay ahead of our competitors, but China is investing, its government is investing billions of dollars in quantum computing. Europe's investing is money as well. And so Congress last year, bipartisan, this is something that had no dispute between Democrats and Republicans, put together the National Quantum Initiative Act. And that was to give us a master plan uh, for advancing quantum-related technologies. And it is vital to the country, and that is why um, we did it. Now, the legislation was signed into law in December, so it's recent, and it ensures ongoing relationships, cooperation, and funding between the federal government, us, local governments, the mayor, the academic sector, Dr. Wong, and the military, Colonel Lawrence. And what the law calls for is several national centers for quantum science research and education, okay? So, that brings me to why we're standing here today. We here at the combination of SUNY Poly and all of SUNY's research uh, uh, institutions and Rome Lab um, are a great opportunity for us because we are one of the outstanding regions for quantum computing already. SUNY's leading research campuses, Buffalo, Binghamton, SUNY Poly, Stony Brook, are engaged in transformational research in quantum science. So harnessing that power into a whole ecosystem where everybody cooperates with each other is very important. 
And probably the most critical part of this ecosystem is right here in the Mohawk Valley. The combination of SUNY Poly, of course, has an Albany branch as well, yeah. and um, Rome Lab. And this is an initiative that I helped establish because we saw that quantum computing would be important. So in the last few years, in each budget cycle in Washington, I've been able to increase Rome Lab's budget to launch its quantum computing center of excellence. We've gotten over $13 million. So that gives us a head start ahead of most other regions. The lab is creating an open campus ecosystem that means not just people from the lab, but people from academia, like SUNY Poly, people from the private sector, companies like IBM, uh, Google, uh, and um, other, others can collaborate together. And that's why we have a partnership between Rome Labs and SUNY Poly, which allows them to exchange talent and cross-fertilize, if you will, the R&D facilities, as well as developing a quantum smart workforce. And this is vital, vital to the future of the country, but it also could create lots of jobs here in the Mohawk Valley down the road. This is not immediate, but if we become one of the centers of quantum computing, that will not only bring more research dollars for SUNY Poly, for Rome Labs, but it will also bring private companies to come here who want to be involved and learn it and do it. And so that is great. So I'm telling the federal government, as you look to establish national, national centers for quantum science research and education, which is what the legislation calls for, the first place they should look is right here in Oneida County, right here with the Rome Labs and SUNY Poly competition will be fierce. There's not just going to be one center, there are going to be a bunch, undetermined number, probably between five and ten. But we have the leg up because of what we've been able to do here uh, at Rome Labs and SUNY Poly. So I am here to tell the members of the consortium, as well as everyone here in the Mohawk Valley, I am going to push along with Congressman Brandisi, who you'll hear from in a minute, but I am going to push this initiative very hard for the future of our country and for the future of jobs here in the Mohawk Valley. So it's a one-two punch that's very, very important. With that, who's supposed to speak Dr. next? Dr. Wang now will give you some of the scientific details. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Schumer, and for your leadership and support. I would also like to recognize the following elected uh, officials for their steadfast support to SUNY and SUNY Poly, Congressman Brindisi, and the New York State Senator Joe Grifo, and also yes. the City of Rome Mayor um, Easel. And essential to SUNY's success is our partnerships. And I want to thank Air Force Research Laboratories Information Directories, uh, Colonel Tim Lawrence and his team, and also the CEO of uh, NASDAQ, Mike Walsh, for their support and partnerships to working together in quantum science and engineering. The quantum technology today is at the similar stage of uh, the digital computer back in 1940s. And starting with the invention of the transistors back in 1947, and through the research in semiconductors, in software, computing networks, and even the invention of the computer mouse, it is the very fact that we did not stand still as a country, as a community, that put us as the leader in the information economy. And so today, we have the same opportunity in quantum. And from quantum sensors to quantum communication and also the quantum computing, the SUNY researchers are enabling the future quantum technologies that will help us address more complex issues than what we can do today. And from highly secured communication to more effective drug discovery. So as it is historically the case for many emerging technologies, the quantum comes with a workforce need. 
And SUMI is proud and committed to work with our partners through our outstanding faculty and researchers to engage our students and our partners to prepare tomorrow's quantum smart workforce. We have tremendous opportunity in quantum information science and engineering and working together with Air Force Research Laboratory and also our other partners we look forward to advancing the quantum information technologies and preparing tomorrow's quantum smart workforce and helping to grow the economy right here at the Mohawk Valley and also across the state. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Wang. And now and we're going to hear from our great new congressman who will be my partner in these issues. <laughs> the first time the first time I got money for Rome Labs, I was not a senator. I didn't represent you. I was a congressman. But Sherry Bollard, your predecessor, yes. once removed or twice? Twice three. removed. Actually, three times removed. Three. 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 Oh, yeah, right. I forgot about the brief I tenure there. I want to be as long as him. Right. Um, but Sherry brought me up here, and I helped get money for Rome Labs back then. So I've had a great partnership, whether the Congress members are Democrat or Republican, in working here for the lab and for this. And I can't think of a better partner than our new congressman, Brindisi. Thank you, Senator. Well, it's great to be with Senator Schumer, as always, and it's great to be his partner on the federal level. He's someone who's always available for us here in the Mohawk Valley, just a phone call away, and I appreciate his leadership on this initiative and so many other initiatives across uh, our state and our region. Uh, Dr. Wang, it's great to be with you. I uh, look forward to working with SUNY Poly now at the federal side uh, on all kinds of issues that they have going on. Uh, Mayor Izzo, who is a great leader here in the city of Rome, certainly moving our city forward uh, and understands the role of economic development and the role the labs play uh, in advancing Rome and our region. And to Colonel Lawrence, uh, he gave me a great uh, tour of the labs a few weeks ago. We got a chance to ride home on the airplane from Washington last week, uh, and he's going to do great things here with Rome Labs and helping to move our economy and our nation's uh, security forward. Uh, I want to thank the Griffiths Institute for hosting us and for continuing yes. to highlight and advance the importance of quantum computing and quantum information science. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today with Senator Schumer to play a role in pushing on the House side for this designation. Uh, the efforts to help develop quantum information services uh, has immense national security and economic implications for the United States and the Mohawk Valley. Our adversaries, including China, recognize the massive potential of quantum technologies and have begun to invest heavily that's one thing I took away from my visit to, to the labs like a few weeks ago. For our security and for our economy, we need to make sure the United States is the global leader on quantum technology. And I'm proud of SUNY Poly and Rome Labs' incredible contributions to the research and development of critical quantum technologies that directly contribute to keeping our country safe. As you know, last year Congress did pass the National Quantum Initiative Act to develop a strategy to coordinate public and private research of quantum information sciences, SUNY's existing quantum information science efforts and programs and its strong partnership with Rome Lab make it uniquely suited to become one of the five national centers of quantum science research and education. And I know SUNY Poly and Rome Lab stand ready to continue innovating and developing these critical technologies to make sure the United States leads the way on this very important initiative. Naming SUNY as a National Center of Quantum Sciences uh, and Education is a win-win. It's great for our economy here in the region, it's great for our national security, and I know that with this designation, we will certainly move forward uh, to being a leader in quantum information sciences. So thank you, Senator, for your push, and I look you, forward to working with you on this initiative, and I'll turn it back over to the Senator. Great. Mayor, do you want to say a few words? Thank you. And then we'll have the Colonel. Thank you, Senator. Thank you for being here today. And uh, this is a second return trip in just a little while. Yes, it is. So he's a real champion of uh, Air Force Research Laboratory, and we definitely appreciate that. I think this is a really exciting time to be involved in our area. Dr. Wong is doing great things at SUNY. And you know, SUNY's only 10 minutes east of here. And with our lab and SUNY collaborating together, I think this is really going to move this park into new opportunities in the new generation of quantum computing, which we've been talking about. I've been talking with the lab about this now for the last three and a half years, and to see possibly this coming to fruition at the federal level is fantastic. And uh, you're right, our new congressman, he's hitting the ground hard in Washington, and so we thank both of you for all of your efforts, and certainly Colonel Lawrence is going to do great things. He already is at the lab, 
And I thank all of you for being here this morning and the Griffiths Institute for keeping us rooted in what we should really be doing in the next generation of science and research. Thanks, Mayor. Colonel. Thank you, sir. Senator, Congressman, Dr. Wong, uh, Mayor, this is a huge day for the Air Force and the Air Force Research Lab. Our senior leaders have been telling us that uh, we have to get product to the warfighter immediately. And forming consortiums with universities like SUNY is the way we need to go. Because we can leverage their expertise uh, to solve these very tough problems. Um, as the Senator said, uh, there is a lot of challenges in quantum as far as security. Uh, there's also big concerns uh, with communication, with networks, uh, with sensors. Right now, if we can make a quantum sensor, that would enable us to get precise navigation anywhere in the world and we would not have to rely on GPS. Mm -hmm. So it's a breakthrough technology that the warfighter needs. And working with Dr. Wan uh, in our open campus, um, my whole feeling is I'm originally from Iowa. Uh, if you build it, they will come. Field of Dreams is one of my favorite Great movie. <laughs> and they're starting to come. I mean, we have relationships with Dr. Wan. We have uh, IBM on board. We have Google. Uh, we're getting all the key players. We have a big meeting down at City next week to talk to them about quantum and uh, uh, machine learning applications that they've been doing for market analysis. So this is a, is a great time and it's just a huge opportunity uh, for me to be here. Dr. Wan has uh, invited me to be the commencement speaker, mm -hmm. which I'm really looking forward to, nice. to the May 13th graduation. The only uh, challenge is that's the same uh, due date of my wife's baby. So, uh, <laughs> so I number? said, uh, first one. Hey, so, so, I just became a grandfather, three months old. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. So we're, I was joking, the only way that I can do the talk is have my wife come. If she goes into labor, uh, while the commencement address goes, those students will remember that commencement address for the rest of their lives. <laughs> so anyway, thank you again. It's a wonderful day for us. Thank you. Thank you. I will say this. So my younger daughter told us she was getting married on November 18th. This is related to your story. Three months later, my older daughter told us she was pregnant. What was the due date, Jessica? November 18th. However, the baby was late. So I hope it works out for you the same <laughs> Okay. I <hope> so <laughs> okay. Now we have MC Kershicki, who's done a great job with the Central New York Defense Alliance. MC. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, these guys stole my thunder, right? They, they told the story. It's about the team that is surrounding me. Uh, starting way back in 2011, uh, working with Dr. Ahedek. We were talking quantum then, and I went to Senator Schumer. And we call. <laughs> and, and he was like, let's do it. So while we're making a big announcement today, we have a very visionary, a very collaborative team behind us. And, and that's why we can go after one of these hubs and be successful. And that, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, MC. <laughs> Nice, Thank to, you. nice to see you. Thank and you do you want to say something? Sure, I'll, Mr. I'll Walsh. Say few okay. Mike Walsh, who's the CEO of NYSTEC. Yes, as president and CEO of a New York State information technology company, I also get the privilege of joining this team of federal, state, local, municipal uh, leaders, the uh, SUNY Poly, the United States Air Force Research Lab, to win not only win the hub, but have this hub become an economic engine the all of the Mohawk Valley. So we are co completely committed with our partnerships here, and uh, we're going to win, and we're going to win big. Thank, Thank you, you for your support. Thank you. Great. We'll take questions. Before I do that, I think, well, I'll do it afterwards. Uh, Sackwood Creek we want to talk about a little bit. We're applying for a FEMA grant for that, but I'll get to that. Let's do questions on this first. Uh, Question. Is there a timetable? Hmm? Timetable? Uh, yeah, it should be relatively soon. The law is passed. They haven't yet sent up an RFP, but we want to be the first in there and start talking to them the minute we will be ready to fill out the RFP <coughs> quicker than anybody else. So soon. So the, the work should start the next few months. Where do you think most of the competition is going to come from? All over. This is a very luring thing, but nobody has Rome Labs, SUNY Poly, and the open campus collaboration that we do. Nobody. So we should, and there's not just one, so we have a very good chance to win. 
What made SUNY Holly so attractive for something like this? Well, the research that's there, they've been doing this for a long time. And you know, they've always focused on practical type research, not just things that might affect how big is the universe 200 years from now. Not that I'm against any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> and so uh, the, the great quality of the people, the teachers and researchers at SUNY Poly and the combination with Rome Labs, I think is unbeatable. Senator, just to bring this full circle, do you think this technology could be used for border protection someday? Well, it can be used for just about anything. I mean, even now we have drones at the border that are so good they can tell a deer from a human crossing the border, but this will make it much, much better. Absolutely. This kind of technology will affect a whole lot of things and make people's lives a whole lot better. Medicine, you know, they could do with quantum computing and AI, they can like do trial runs on every test drug in a day, not five years. So it can, it's huge amounts of things. Just think. It's very smart, and it speeds things up very fast. Is that a good way to describe it? Yes, yeah, sir. If you want the equation, it's, it's two to the end uh, um, as far as uh, computational efficiency. Let me just say this. It's two to the n. As <laughs> far as <laughs> n is for new. <laughs> Any other questions on this subject? OK, so let me uh, go to. Our little FEMA announcement. I'm going to find all my papers here. Nope. They gave me a lot of papers. It's there. I know. <laughs> they just give them to me all at once. This is Flight 103. Somebody wants to talk about Flight 103. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so, we all know, and this has been a problem for a while that towns and villages throughout Oneida County have been ravaged from flooding from Sacquit Creek, Sequoia hmm? Creek over the last, I visited it, so uh, I've been there. Uh, Sequoia Creek over the last decade, and that's causing millions of dollars of damage. So for the first time, I, I visited a few years ago, the county wasn't ready to apply for a FEMA grant because they didn't have all their ducks in order. Now they have. Uh, we've gotten an increase in FEMA in the budget that just passed, and we're going to, uh, Congressman Brindisi and I are calling on FEMA today to do its part using the hazard mitigation uh, grant program and to give us some money so uh, we can prevent the flooding of Sequoia Creek, which happens all too often, uh, has several times in the last decade. Anthony, you want to say something about I, I that? I think you're, you're, you're correct, Senator. This has been an ongoing issue for, for many years now. The Sequoia Creek has flooded numerous times over the last decade, and these storms are coming uh, every year now. These 100-year storms are coming every, every couple of years. And it's important that we uh, secure this federal funding to complement the state funding, the county funding, uh, to give these folks in this community of Whitestown and Whitesboro and other communities along the Sequoia Creek some peace of mind uh, to be able to repair the damage that's been done over the last few years. So. Look forward to working with the It's senator. amazing how an, a creek like this can flood so, such a large area, but I remember several years ago visiting and it was just awful. When? Uh, 14, I think, 2014. Whenever, a few years back. So is this what, fixing what went wrong or is this preventing in the future or both. combination? Both. You've got to do both. If you fix what went wrong, you'll prevent what happened in the future from occurring. To the two end. No. How much is the grant? Mm -hmm. How much is the grant for? 3.9 million. 3.9 million dollars. And it's from FEMA? From FEMA. The Hazard Mitigation Program, which is, you couldn't, you know, if you had to design a program that fits the needs of Sequoia Creek, this is it. Is this to do the benches, or is this for new equipment? It's new equipment, benches, a whole bunch of stuff. Okay? Other subjects, because I know our Mohawk Valley Press Corps always has other subjects. Senator, in terms of... I'm going to of answer each one by two to the end. <laughs> in terms of President Trump's announcement on Friday, um, are you concerned that this will set a precedent moving forward that uh, you can just call for a national emergency? Well, you know, Congress? one of the places, there was a famous Supreme Court Justice, Jackson, how, who was actually from Chautauqua County. He was from Jamestown. He's a famous judge. 
and he has the last major decision. He says, the least likely time you're able to call an emergency is when Congress said it wasn't an emergency and didn't, prevent, didn't send the funds. So I think it's going to be a rough road to hold the, for President Trump to win in court. Yes? Um, you said that you know, housing is possibly be a national emergency. What actually constitutes a financial emergency? Well, in the past, there have been a whole bunch of emergencies, but they fall into two categories. One is war. After 9-11, there was a national emergency. The other is diseases, when we had the Ebola uh, scare and other things. Uh, that has been an emergency. Something like this, which Congress debated and didn't agree uh, with the executive branch, has never been an emergency. Um, there's been talk about legal action um, that could be taken. Well, there'll be people taking legal action, I suppose. I think it's, as I said, because it's unprecedented in this way. Uh, Lamar Alexander, one of the leading Republicans in the Senate, spoke out and said he didn't think it was a national emergency. And he's very well respected. He's from Tennessee. Okay. Senator, what are your thoughts on Amazon's decision to pull out of New York City? Well, look, I, I regretted the loss of jobs. Um, and if any other place in New York wants to try to we'll take it. get them, <laughs> I'll do my best to help. I don't, know if, I don't know what their plans are for the future. There is a push to bring them here to Look, I'd help any place in New York try to, try to get them. Senator, following a funny tweet, the people want to know if you're ever going to upgrade from your flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Ionelli, where are you? He's not at home. Here we go. Uh, I guess I am upgrading without knowing. Here, here, toss it over, Emily. So, people say this is related a little bit to what Colonel Lawrence had to say. This is what I use. I'm never, when I'm going to a meeting, I'm always paying attention, not having my head in the iPhone. But guess what? Putin cannot listen in on this. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a nice day.